Kobe Bryant, and Shaquille O'Neal feud. This is it, fellas. You work all year long for it, man. Shaq the man, most dominant player in the world. Championship, stars. Love it, it's beautiful. Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal had one of the greatest partnerships in the history of the NBA. The type of high-powered duo that rivaled the likes of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. They were dominant beyond measure and the only thing bigger than their successes together were their egos. Kobe and Shaq had the most famous feud in the NBA. The legendary duo played together for the NBA Team Los Angeles Lakers from 1996 to 2004, during which they won three consecutive NBA championships and made an additional NBA Finals appearance in 2004. Shock was the NBA Finals MVP in each of their victories. Their volatile relationship, personal differences and arguments over their respective roles on the Lakers team filled the media headlines. This was followed by Chalk getting shipped off to the Miami Heat for Lamar Odom, while Kobe was re-signed as a free agent by the Lakers. But what happened with Kobe and Chalk? Here's a look back at some of the most significant moments in the Chalk-Kobe feud and how the two made amends before Kobe Bryant's devastating death. season. By the 1996 summer, the once mighty Los Angeles Lakers had fallen. The team had just come off a 53 win in the 1995-1996 season, and they hadn't made the Western Conference Finals in five years. Considering that the Lakers had made nine finals appearances in 12 years, it was important that they keep up their pace. They needed new energy, some Lakers-level star power and some showtime. This came with the 1996 draft where Lakers general manager Jerry West drafted 17-year-old Philadelphia-born and Italy-raised high school player Kobe Bryant from the Charlotte Hornets by trading center player Vlade Divac. Before this draft, no NBA team had drafted a shooting guard straight out of high school. After the Lakers freed up money by parting with other veteran players, they signed free agent and publicly acclaimed center Shaquille O'Neal later in 1996. The 1996-1997 NBA season arrived with a lot of excitement and fanfare, and there was immediate friction between the franchise's two new stars. Even though Kobe was the youngest player in the league, he stood out with confidence and arrogance. He carried himself with a sense of entitlement and didn't jump at the opportunity to be friends with his teammates. Kobe believed he would be the best NBA player and boasted about it to everyone who wanted to hear it which was interpreted by the older players as arrogance. During the first meeting with the team when Kobe introduced himself, he said this, I'm Kobe Bryant. I dominate everything. I ain't gonna be punked by anybody in the NBA. These were early signs that Kobe was gonna be a pain in the neck to his teammates and his opponents. As time went on, the Lakers didn't play good basketball to be able to compete for the title, and Chalk was losing his patience. Chalk was the best and the most dominant center player in the game, and he was getting to his late 20s without a ring to show for all his work, which pissed him off. He told Lakers management that he didn't want to babysit Kobe who was averaging 15 points and just two assists per game. While Chalk's personality was good-humored, comical, and cheerful, Kobe's demeanor was all business, professional, and workouts. When Chalk threw parties and hung out with teammates, Kobe alienated himself, focusing entirely on basketball. Chalk also jokingly started referring to Kobe as showboats because of his flashy lifestyle. Facing elimination against the Utah Jazz in an overtime playoff game, Lakers coach Del Harris designed the Laker offense around rookie Kobe, who fired four air balls. Harris explained that Kobe's one-on-one -on -one skills made him the best choice. While Lakers players like Eddie Jones expressed his dismay at a rookie trusting himself with such shots, Chalk surprisingly put his arm around Kobe as they left the court and told Kobe to use the doubters, the haters and his failure to fuel his game moving forward. 
Every time there was a little breakthrough in their relationship, we were reminded that they were just too different to truly ever coexist. 1997-1998 season. Kobe was assigned by the Lakers to play in the 1997 NBA Summer League to improve as a team player and learn how to stop throwing air balls. Despite the fact that Kobe wasn't even a Lakers starter yet, he was voted an All-Star starter in 1998 NBA All-Star Game. The Lakers team struggled after the All-Star break, losing seven of their first 12 games, and Chalk still wanted a championship immediately and did not want to wait for Kobe to mature as a player. Lakers head coach, Del Harris thought the NBA and its television broadcaster NBC were overexposing Kobe to the world, and that was why he became more of a one-on-one -on -one player after the All-Star break, so he reduced Kobe's playing time. The Lakers won 61 games in the 1998 season before they once again got beat in four games to zero by the Utah Jazz in the Western Conference Finals. 1998-1999 season. If you thought that was already enough drama for the dysfunctional Lakers, you're in for a ride. The team's management fired Coach Del Harris, signed and released Dennis Rodman after just 23 games, and traded Eddie Jones to Chicago for a package that included Glenn Rice. Even as the NBA plays its most important games of the season, negotiations are ongoing between the league and the Players Association for a new collective bargaining agreement. The current contract expires June 30th, and if a new agreement is not in place by then, a lockout or possibly a moratorium on league business could begin. During the 1998 to 1999 NBA lockout, for those unaware, the lockout was a time when the National Basketball Players Association NBPA asked for salary raises for players who earned the league's minimum salary, and when they failed to reach an agreement, the NBPA started the lockout. The 1998-1999 NBA lockout was the third lockout of four in the history of the NBA. The lockout lasted from July 1, 1998 to January 20, 1999, and forced the regular season to be shortened to 50 games per team, while also canceling the season's All-Star game. During the lockout, Chalk and Kobe played a two-on-two -two basketball game with their teammates Derek Fisher and Corey Blount, where the two began trash-talking and cussing each other out. Kobe was always a physical player during practice, and Fisher said, that was really the way we all should have been playing, with Kobe's spirit. During the game, Chalk slapped Kobe, and in retaliation, Kobe threw some punches that thankfully never landed because they were separated by their teammates. Fisher later said, neither Kobe nor Chalk started it as they were both being physical. During the season, the Lakers blamed Kobe for their problems, and at one point, Chalk even pointed at Kobe in the locker room and flat out told reporters that there's the problem. Later in the season, Kobe's jerseys were outselling Chalk's jerseys in Southern California sporting goods stores, which brought up rumors that Chalk was growing jealous of Kobe. Derek Fisher said that's far from the truth. All Chalk wants to do is win. Chalk also thought Kurt Rambis, one of the Lakers coaches, favored Kobe. Rambis asked Chalk to heal the rift and talk to Kobe, to which Chalk reportedly gave him a blank, cold stare. The squabble between Chalk and Kobe continued into the 1998-1999 NBA playoffs. While the Lakers defeated the Houston Rockets in the first round of the playoffs, they were ultimately swept 4-0 by the San Antonio Spurs in the second round. The two had continuous problems during the 1999 season where Chalk called Kobe selfish and accused him of being too individualistic in his game and failing to approach games with team effort in mind. Chalk thought Kobe's selfish efforts came at the expense of the Lakers team's success. 1999-2000 season during the 1999 offseason, Jerry West and Lakers owner Jerry Buss agreed to sign six-time NBA champion Phil Jackson to a five-year $30 million contract to be the team's new head coach entering the 1999-2000 season. Buss was previously a believer in spending conservatively on coaches, but Chalk and Kubi both encouraged him to hire Jackson. With the arrival of Phil Jackson, Everything started making sense for the Lakers and Chalk respected Phil because he had just won six championships with the Chicago Bulls. Chalk was extremely motivated to win one too. 
Jackson returned to coaching after taking a year off following his six titles, taking on the highest profile, most pressured filled basketball job. Jackson decided that the offense would center around Shock, who was given the responsibility to distribute the ball. He also wanted better leadership, physical conditioning, and defense from Chalk. Jackson also chose to develop a close relationship with Chalk. Kobe missed the season's first 15 games due to a broken wrist injury, allowing the Lakers to focus on Chalk as Jackson had planned. Hiring Jackson was now proving to be a good move as the team amassed a win of an NBA best 67-15 record, which was one of the best records in the league's history. Chalk led the league in scoring averaging 30 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 blocks, and he deservedly won his first NBA MVP award. Chalk was on a mission that year, and that mission was to destroy everybody who got in between him and the Larry O'Brien. Kobe returned to a team Jackson had running like a well-oiled machine. The playoffs were, however, not so smooth, but they produced a magical comeback, sending the Lakers to the finals. And there, they beat the Indiana Pacers four games to two. After a spectacular and incredible performance by both Chalk and Kobe, they finally won a title with the Lakers. And Kobe jumped into Chalk's arms in celebration. Nobody could have predicted that this happiness and harmony between the two star players wouldn't last for long. 2000-2001 season. After Chalk proved that he was a winner and the best player in the league, he had spent his summer chilling and not taking care of his body. Chalk and Kobe started beefing because Chalk came into training camp out of shape, which disappointed Jackson and Kobe, especially as Kobe worked extremely hard during the offseason to improve his game. Kobe was furious and didn't understand why Chalk didn't take his job seriously. Kobe openly called out Chalk and demanded that he become the number one option because he thought he was the team's best player. Chalk, of course, was against and called Kobe selfish, but Kobe pushed back and said that Chalk's defense had deteriorated. Despite a slow and poor start, things turned around for the Lakers in the second half of the season when Chalk got healthy and back in shape. The Lakers were the best team in the league. When it was clear that everything went through me, the outcome of it was 67 to 15, playing with enthusiasm, the city jumping up and down in a parade, and now we're 23 to 11. You figure it out. I don't know why anybody else would want to change other than selfish reasons. Chalk said midway through the season with reference to Kobe demanding to be the team's number one. To get an idea of how bad the friction was, Chalk requested a trade after signing a three-year extension deal with the Lakers. Obviously, management didn't agree to Chalk's demands. The Lakers lost only one game in the 2000-2001 season's playoff on their way to bagging another championship. Their 15-1 playoff record was the best in the league, meanwhile, Kobe and Chalk looked like they were in perfect harmony. The Lakers won their second NBA championship in a row, defeating the Philadelphia Sixers in five games. 2001-2002 season not much was made public about the feud in the 2001-2002 season, as the team was set back by injuries and personal tragedies. Chalk missed training camp due to surgery on an arthritic toe. Kobe and Jackson also missed most of camp due to the death in their various families. Jackson had just lost his mother and Kobe his grandmother, coupled with the September 11 attacks on the World Trade Center. There was no room for petty fights. Despite the rocky season, the Lakers won their third consecutive championship, defeating the New Jersey Nets by a 4-0 margin. It was the Lakers' first championship sweep in their history, and Chalk won his third consecutive NBA Finals MVP. Kobe and Chalk complimented each other after the game. 2002-2003 season. This season got off to the worst start. Chalk couldn't play because he had delayed his toe surgery because he didn't want to walk on crutches and opted to have surgery just when the Lakers training camp was about to start. He said, I got hurt on company time, so I'll rehab on company time, which of course didn't sit well with Kobe. During the season, Kobe was, however, averaging at least 40 points with a nine game streak. When Chalk got back to play, Jackson told Kobe to score less and send the ball to Chalk, which made Kobe furious. Jackson took this decision because he knew that Chalk was sensitive and needed to play offensively to fully commit to the team. Kobe was beyond mad and didn't want to stop scoring, which started off a new set of arguments. 
Unfortunately, the Lakers were eliminated by the San Antonio Spurs in the conference semifinals. Kobe and Chalk's beef was far from over and the worst was yet to come. 2003-2004 season. Before this season started, Chalk wanted a new contract with the Lakers. Kobe was absent from training camp because he was dealing with rape charges in Colorado and his recovery from knee surgery. The Lakers announced the signing of veteran free agents and former All-Stars Carl Malone and Gary Payton, who were brought onto the Lakers by Chalk. With Kobe absent, Chalk said the full team is here. Kobe privately warned Jackson, if O'Neal starts saying unreasonable things in the press, I'll fire back. I've had it. Jackson and the Lakers management called Kobe and Chalk and told them not to make their beef public, else they will be punished. When Kobe joined the Lakers in camp, Chalk told reporters Kobe should look to be more of a passer than a scorer until Kobe's knee was fully healed. Kobe responded that he knew how to play the guard position and that Chalk should worry about the low post. Chalk answered that he's right. He doesn't need advice on how to play guard, but he needs advice on how to play as a team. This is my team. If he doesn't like it, let him go after this season. Just ask Carl and Gary why they came here. One person, not two, one. The situation was getting out of hand and it finally exploded when Kobe had an interview with Jim Gray on ESPN where Kobe said, Chalk came to training camp fat and out of shape. Kobe questioned Chalk's leadership skills that Chalk blamed others for the team's defeats and criticized Chalk for only taking responsibility when the team won. That Chalk exaggerated the degree to which injuries had affected his game as a cover for simply being out of condition. Kobe called Chak selfish for requiring a max contract. When we have two future Hall of Famers, Malone and Peyton playing here pretty much for free, Kobe accused Chalk of threatening not to play his best if he was not passed the ball more often. Kobe was also upset that Chalk did not personally contact him amidst his legal troubles in the summer. Once the interview aired, Chalk was furious. He wanted to fight Kobe and everyone expected an altercation between the two during practice, but their teammates and coaches prevented a fight. Kobe yelled at Chalk during practice, saying, You always told me you were my older brother, that you would do anything for me. But when Colorado happened, you didn't even call. I thought you would at least support me in public. Brian Shaw, one of their teammates, got involved and spoke, Kobe, why are you saying such things? You never came to any party organized by Chalk. We called you to dinner so many times and you didn't show up. Chalk invited you to the wedding too and you didn't come again, then you got married and didn't invite any of us. And now that you are in a difficult situation, you expect our help. Well, we don't even know you, man. Jackson fined Kobe for defying his orders on not talking to the press. Due to his uncertain legal situation, Chalk promised not to beef with Kobe publicly again. Chalk and Kobe's relationship and chemistry was broken beyond repair. Despite all the beefing, the Lakers reached the finals again, but lost to the Pistons in four games to one. The lack of chemistry showed between the two players where Kobe was trying to win the title by himself, while Chalk wasn't as engaged on offense. The Pistons won the title because they played as a team while the Lakers lost because they played as individuals. After the season ended, Phil Jackson was fired while Kobe was looking to move to Chicago to play for the Chicago Bulls when news broke out that Chalk was traded to Miami Heat. Kobe then chose to stay with the Lakers after Chalk left. 2004 to 2008. Chalk and Kobe weren't talking during these entire seasons. During a 2004 interview with Stephen A. Smith, Kobe expressed the desire to apologize to Chalk for some of the comments he made during his court case, I should have done what Chalk does. Chalk would pay his women not to say anything and had paid $1 million in situations like this. Chalk said this in rebuttal to Kobe's statement, I never hang out with Kobe. In the seven or eight years we were together, we were never together. So how this guy can think he knows anything about me and my business is funny. Kobe later realized that he crossed the line by bringing Chalk's personal life into their beef. That season, Chalk wasn't interested in talking to Kobe and ignored him during games their teams played against each other. Chalk won the NBA title in 2006 with Dwayne Wade and the Miami Heat. 
After Kobe failed to win a title in the 2008 NBA Finals, Shaq made a filthy rap about it. 2009 to present date, Kobe and Shaq represented the Western Conference in the 2009 NBA All-Star Game with Phil Jackson as the West head coach. The two got along during the All-Star Weekend and were named the game's co-MVPs. Looked like the beef was finally over. Kobe won the 2009 NBA title with the Lakers after which Chalk congratulated him on Twitter. The next season, Kobe still won the 2010 NBA title and delivered one of the best remarks in the history of NBA press conferences. He's got one more to Shaq. <laughs> So you can take that to the bank. <laughs> After Chalk retired from the NBA in 2011, their relationship gradually got better, and they always complimented each other in the media. We do think if they stayed together in Los Angeles, they would have definitely won two or three more titles together. They were probably better off apart, plus Kobe wanted his own team to be able to prove himself. In a one-on-one -on -one interview of Kobe and Chalk in 2019, they made amends for the long years of feud and they hugged it out. In January 2020, Kobe unexpectedly passed away after a fatal helicopter crash in Southern California that killed nine people, including Kobe and his second daughter, Gianna Bryant. Chalk was beyond devastated to be losing an old friend, team player, and someone he considered family. Devastating turn of events, we know. Life happened, and despite it all, Kobe and Shaq will always be remembered as the legendary duo with the greatest partnership in NBA history. If you liked the video, please subscribe, like and share it, and don't forget to click on the notification bell, so you don't miss our next video. See you soon on Mazel Media, information at the heart of the world.